We are still working on methods of proof. So now we're going to move on to divisibility. Let's go over the definition. The most important step in math is to specify the definition. What is the definition? Divisibility. Very good. If n and d are integers, n and d are integers, and d is not zero, then we say that n is divisible by d if and only if n is equal to d times, for example, another integer like k. k is an integer. So n is divisible by another integer, which is non-zero, if and only if n can be written as the multiplication of d and another integer. In that case, we say that n we also say that n is a multiple of d. d is a factor of n. d is a divisor of n. And also, D divides N. So know these terminologies. N is a multiple of D. D is a factor of N. D is a divisor of N. And D divides N. In that case, we are right. D divides N. So you're going to use this vertical line to show that D divides N, or N can be written as D times K for K as an integer. You saw divisibility in algebra. For example, Is 21 divisible by 3? Or can we write 3 divides 21? Of course, 21 can be written as 3 times 7. So 3 is your D and 7 is your K. Another example. If K is any non-zero integer, does K divide zero? Okay. Can you write k divides zero? So mathematically, we write it this way. Is it possible to write zero equals to k times zero? Yeah, that's always true. Yes. So k divides zero. For any non-zero integer like k, k 
k divides 0. Why is that? Because 0 can be written as that number times 0. It's always true. Let's move on to some important theorems in divisibility. So let's just write this this way. So D divides N if and only if N is D times K. That's the definition of divisibility. Okay, theorem. This theorem says for all integers a and b, a and b, if a and b are positive. And B and A divides B and A divides B, then A is less than or equals to B. Okay, here we have a theorem and we try to prove this theorem. Okay, very good. Move on step by step. So what is our goal? Our goal is to show that A is less than equals to B. This is our goal, remember that. This is what you try to prove. This is for all. First of all, you have a universal statement. This is a universal statement. It means that we cannot just take random numbers. We need to show the whole statement for all integers. Okay, so how do I define all integers? Should I take random integers? It's not correct if you take random integers. Just make sure you are not taking random integers. We need to use the definition. use the definition. Okay, so what's the definition? The very first one is you have the integers. They are positive. A divides B. Okay, so A divides B. Since A divides B, it means that A divides B by definition, we can find an integer like K an integer like K such that B is equal to A times K. B is equal to A times K. Okay, so far, so good. How can I use these two? These are the conditions that I'm having. Now, since both A and B are positive integers. K must be larger than or equal to one. So think about B. B is a positive integer, right? It's either one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or anything else. Okay. Must be larger than or equals to one. Now multiply both sides. by a so a k is larger than or equals to a but what is a k a k is equal to b so we just prove that b is larger than a We just prove that B must be larger than equals to A, and we are done with the proof.